Hello athletes and fans of bodybuilding, Tarek El Gindi with the Mr. Olympia. Hadi Shupan is the 2022 Mr. Olympia. He increased in size, he got bigger. That was the first impression from all the judges, that he was bigger than the previous year. What does that do? That makes your waist look small if you add size on your shoulders, chest, and legs. In addition to that, Hadi Shupan displayed the same conditioning he has done in the last couple years. He was already the best poser, and he poses with a lot of conviction. He's experienced. Hadi Shupan is not the biggest, but he was able to close the difference on bigger guys such as Big Rami, such as Michael Crizo. So yes, by getting bigger, now he's not getting defeated by a lot when it comes in the muscularity criteria. Now let's take a look at second place, Derek Lunsford. He was bigger than when he was at 212. His conditioning was impeccable. He actually has a smaller waist than Hadi Schupen, and he potentially beat Hadi Schupen in some poses. What he doesn't have is the deep cuts that come from muscle maturity. And yes, Hadi has those deep cuts. He has deep cuts on the abdominals, deep cuts in the separation between shoulders, biceps, and chest. And that makes a difference in the conditioning. Was there a condition? Yes, you could see by his striated glutes, but he's gonna have to have deeper separation to deal with a competitor that has been training for decades. Let's talk about Nick Walker. He is an unstoppable force. He is massive, he's conditioned, and he's getting better and better and better. It feels like Nick Walker will eventually, at some point, might win the Mr. Olympia. His confidence, his desire to win, and his improvements are undeniable. What Nick has to do is to pose better, is to make his physique more aesthetically pleasing, to beat guys like Derek and Hadi. He's bigger than them, but he's gonna have to work on his shape. Brandon Curry placed fourth. And yes, he might have the best lines on that top five, but Brandon was holding water, and that has been a traditional problem in the past. If Brandon was conditioned, it would be very hard to beat him because he was actually bigger. But Brandon's problem has never been size, has never been the lines. It has been just a film of water that prevents us from seeing some cuts on the quads and also on the back shots. Yes, Big Rami, fifth place. He is injured. Big Rami has an injury which prevents him from opening his back double biceps. He didn't have to be in the comparisons for us to see it. We could see it when he came on his individual, that Big Rami did not open his back double biceps, which is one of the most powerful poses in bodybuilding. That is an issue which he has to fix if he wants to move back into the first spot. Now what happens is, you are literally losing a pose which is vital. Your back double biceps indicates a lot, muscularity, shape, detail. And I don't know what happened, but if you guys look at his individual initial posing, he can't open that. You look like the tricep is also compromised, and I think Big Rami is injured. We do not see his best. We did not see 2020 Big Rami. We did not see 2021 Big Rami. You are not going to win the Olympia if you don't open a back double biceps. Ronnie Coleman was injured. He couldn't open a lat spread. Dorian Yates barely beat Nasser El Sombadi because of his biceps, and he did a tremendous job hiding. Phil Heath had the hernia surgery, and he couldn't really surpass some of the guys that were coming up. And that is the history of bodybuilding. Mr. Olympias get hurt. And unfortunately, when they get hurt, a lot of times they do not get better. Big Rami might be the first one to come back and shock the world. But as, as it is right now, he is injured and he placed fifth. I wanna move on to the men's physique. Aaron Banks. 
yes. He talked the trash. A lot of people criticized him. A lot of people said, why is he talking so much trash? But yes, he backed up his talk and he won the Mr. Olympia. His back is impeccable and he's the best from the back. From the front, he could very well lose to Brandon Hendrickson, but he closed the gap. And Brandon Hendrickson, who's bubbly, has round muscle bellies, was holding a little bit of water from the back. And that was that, a little difference that made Aaron Banks the Mr. Olympia. He is a phenomenal competitor, and he showed great deal of respect to Brandon Hendrickson and all the other competitors. The trash talking is what a lot of competitors do to trigger their mind to do something that they can't do by themselves. It happened to Michael Jordan when he created enemies to beat some of the most amazing competitors. I want to talk to you about the wheelchair division. Harold King Kong Kelly gains the title. Yes, and I say gain because he needed to beat Gabriele Andriuli, who beat him at the Arnold Classic. Harold was not conditioning then. Harold missed separation and Gabriele beat him. And Harold was angry and he was hangry. He said to me, Tarek, I wanted my title. I wanted to eat this alive. I did not like losing. Gabriele Andriuli is an amazing competitor. He can beat Harold if Harold is off. But this time, Harold was not off and he has all the muscularity to beat everybody on that lineup. Classic physique. Ramon Dino is incredible. He is phenomenal. He has amazing arms. He has amazing forearms. He's an incredible bodybuilder. He might be just one of the most genetically gifted human beings at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. But might be just one guy better than him. And his name is C. Bum, AKA Chris Bumstead. Chris Bumstead beats Ramon Dino on the large clavicle bones. He is wider than Ramon. And by being wider, he makes his waist small. His quads just flare very nicely. If you look at the comparison, C. Bum beats Ramon on the front double biceps. On the side chest, Ramon is dense and he has that huge arm to go along his quads and he could potentially beat Sibam on that. But on the back double biceps, the pose that Chris Bumstead was criticized for many years, that was the pose that he beat Ramon. Yes, Breon Ansley beat Sibam so many times, and now Sibam is beating competitors from the back. On the abs and shot, yes, both of them have the vacuum, and that could be very close. And then on the classic physique, those guys just managed to hit the same pose and it could go either way on that. But yes, yes, it was the back double biceps that really put the hammer down and said that at this point, Sebum is a better bodybuilder than Ramon. On the 212, Sean Clarita, yes, he is the closest thing to 1998 Ronnie Coleman. If you stretch his physique to the sides and you get him at 5'9", 5'10", you are looking at the closest thing to Ronnie Coleman. Sean Clarita stepped on stage and absolutely dominated. There's no feedback. There's nothing you can change on that physique. He is just incredible bodybuilder. And to be fairly honest, he might just be the best bodybuilder at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. If you want to compete against Sean Clarita, I am not quite sure what you have to do, but you have to get close to a miracle because this man is on fire. It was an amazing, amazing, amazing Mr. Olympia. It is a wonderful sport. It is an honest sport where the best athlete wins regardless of where he is, regardless of sanctions, regardless of political views, the best athlete wins. My name is Tarek El Gindi, and I am proud to be part of bodybuilding. I am proud to be part of the Mr. Olympia.